Again, this morning we'll be in Matthew 27. I would like to begin reading in verse 33. I'm going to take us through verse 44. In verse 33, he says, And when they were coming to a place called Gogotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, they parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. By the way, that's a quote from Psalm 22 and verse 18. Verse 36 says, And sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down. From the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. I guess if you want to summarize it, there's three main reasons that the the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. Number one was to redeem fallen man. Amen. His purchase of blood bought back the sinner to God for everyone that will repent and trust Christ can be saved because of that sacrifice. The second reason would be to reveal the holiness of God. Many would say to reveal the love of God. But it's to reveal the holiness of God. You cannot um, be saved without first understanding who God is. Amen? Uh, I think what we see in most of our Baptist churches today is a false God. A God that's all loving. He loves, He hates sin, but He loves the sinner. The Bible contradicts that. The Bible teaches that He's angry with the wicked every day. Yeah. And that He hates people. Isn't that right? The Bible says that he hates people. Well, he hates sin and he hates sinners. Amen? And to uh, he sent his son to reveal his holiness. That's why we preach the law when we're out street preaching. That's why we name sin. Because most people don't want anything to do with the holiness of God. They want to deal with the love of God. They want to talk about, well, Jesus loves me, so he died on the cross for me. I hate to tell you, he did come to seek and to save that which was lost, but it's based on the holiness and character of his Father. It's not based on how much he loves you. I'm just being honest. It's not. We don't go soul winning or preaching on the street because we love sinners. That's not the reason we go. If if they think we're going to stand out there and love them, they're crazy. We're going to go and we're going to preach the holiness of God. Because they need to know that Christ died. His death was not as much an action of love toward us as it was a love for His Father, but yet the father, Father's idea, the Father's thoughts on sin. When we look at Christ on the cross and what He went through, it shows us sin. It shows us that God is holy. Amen? And I guess the third reason that Christ died on the cross is to reestablish the glory of God. In other words, I thank God that he did. Otherwise, the whole creation would have just been watered up and thrown away. But Christ paid the price for man, a free agent in his thinking, can choose God or not. And God made a way for every man to be able to come to him. God is so good. Amen. Amen. But the thing here, while he's up there dying for their sins, while he's dying to represent his father, while he's dying to reestablish the glory of God, they keep tempting him with the same thing. They keep telling him to come down off the cross. Did you notice that? They didn't care about anything else. They kept tempting him to come down off the cross. Come down off the cross. 
Well, I want to tell you something. I thank God that he didn't come down. Amen. I thank God that he finished it. I thank God that he didn't just get up there and show us, now this is how much I love you, you go and do the same. And then he came off the cross. No, he paid the price and he carried his blood to the mercy seat of God at the resurrection. He endured the cross, despising the shame. I thank God this morning that he didn't come down. Now, this message was inspired back in December of 2001. I heard a, a Filipino men's group sing a song entitled, He Didn't Come Down. Their song has nothing to do with this outline or anything, but the song so impressed my heart that I put together this message. And of course, in looking at this message, I realize now how weak of a preacher I was in 2001. <laughs> so, but I looked at it today and I see that this message applies to us. And I'm going to tell you how it does. Our church, every one of us, is going through some level of persecution. Every one of us has a cross to bear. Every one of us is crucified with Christ. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. And just like when you want, you know, when they started casting it in Jesus' teeth, come down off that cross before he was finished. I want to tell you today, the world is trying to get you off your cross. And I'm telling you not to come down. I'm going to try to encourage you this morning not to come down because he didn't come down. Amen. You stay on your cross and you glorify God. You find a way for God to use you to reestablish re -establish His glory in your life and for your family and those in your sphere of influence. And you show the holiness of God, the power of God in your life by staying on that cross. Don't come down from the cross. Don't give up. Don't compromise. Don't quit. You keep on keeping on for the Lord. He stayed on that cross in spite of sin shame, sinners, Satan, surroundings. He didn't come down. I say, thank God Jesus did not come down. And I want to tell you today that are crucified with Christ. Do not come down off your cross. Now, he stayed on that cross, number one, though many thought he should have. that, that he, he didn't come down, though many thought he should have. Isn't that interesting? He didn't come down, though many thought he should have. You know, even the disciples might have been thinking, boy, why, why is he doing this, you know? There in our text in verse 30, 43, he trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him, for he said, I'm the Son of God. He should come down. If he's really who he says he is, why is he enduring this cross? Why does he do this? Why doesn't he come down? Well, I, I want to give you three reasons I'm glad he didn't come down. Number one, I'm glad he didn't come down because I would be hopelessly lost. Right. I'd have no confidence before God. I'd have no confidence in salvation. I'd have no confidence in dealing with my flesh. I'd have no confidence with the Word of God because I'd be hopelessly lost. Matter of fact, in Matthew 9.36, it says they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. That was me. Right. I thank God that Jesus didn't come down from the cross because I would be hopefully lo hopelessly lost. The second reason I'm thankful that He didn't come down from the cross is because I would still be enslaved to my sin. Right. I want you to know this old flesh is still enslaved. But the power of the Spirit has made me free. Amen. It is more powerful. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, if he had to come off that cross, like not having confidence, I would have no course. I'd have no way to go, nowhere to go, no, no, no how. No, no, uh, uh, practicalities, nothing to help me stay out of sin and out of trouble with God. You see, that's our real problem right there. It's not getting to our Valhalla or our Vishnu or our higher plane. 
or, or, or heaven, the Baptist wants to call it. It's all about getting control over your sin, God's power taking sin out of your life, removing the penalty of it, removing the power of it. Amen. Removing the pleasure of it. He removes it all. Amen. And I thank God that He didn't come down because I'd have no course. But thank God in John 8 and verse 36, the Bible says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. So he didn't come down. I'm glad. Because right. I'd be hopelessly lost and I'd be, and I'd be enslaved to my sin. And the third reason is, I'd be burning in hell. Without compassion. You know what's interesting is so many people believe that when you die, you get to make your choices then. You go to the golden pearly gates, you know, and you get to argue with St. Peter. Find that in the Bible and I'll not only eat your hat, I'll eat your whole wardrobe. Okay, I'll do it on Facebook video. Then I'll let them dump ice water on me since that's the going thing. But I won't eat Tide Pods. I'm just going to tell you that. Amen. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you're going to die and go to the pearly gates. And that you're going to talk to St. Peter most of all. He cringes when people say that. By the way, St. Peter to the Catholic is the Pope. Whether you like it or not, that's the way it is. But they think that you're going to go and you're going to say, well, I've done this and I've done that. Can I come in? What they don't understand is that without knowing Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, without having the blood applied to them specifically because of the sacrifice of the cross, the compassion of the Father, the repentance from the Spirit, if they don't have those things, they don't have the blood, it's already decided where they're going to go. John 3 and verse 36, the Bible says that you're condemned already right. if you have not the Son. But see, I'm thankful today that He uh, didn't come down, though many thought He should have. I'm thankful that He stayed the course and that He stayed on the cross. Let me ask you something. What would be lost if you came off your cross? What would be lost? I mean, right now, if Christ came off that cross, we'd be lost. I'd have no confidence. I'd have no course. There'd be no compassion. I'd just live life and go, die and go to hell. What would happen if you come off your cross? What would happen in your life? If you decide, I don't want this type of persecution. I don't want this type of exposure. You know, it makes perfect sense because there's many around you wanting you to come off your cross. When I got arrested, you wouldn't believe how they come out of the woodwork like, oh, oh, stop what you're doing. Don't, don't do that anymore because, you know, you can't get arrested. Your church needs you. Your family needs you. So you want me to stop preaching the gospel? You want me to come off the cross? Right. Come on now. Amen. I can't do that. You know, what about the temptation you're going through, brother? If you just came off your cross, you can move back to Atlanta and you would have your kid as much as you want. Right. If you just came off your cross, right. you know, as much as you love your brother, if you just came off your cross, you guys would probably be pretty tight. Amen? Yeah. At some level, right? As much as families can be. Amen. When you come off your cross. See, many people think you should come off your cross because look at your life. Your life is miserable. All you have is church. All you have is the Bible and God. Man, that's boring. That's horrible. When you take up this cross, you're your own worst enemy. That's what they were saying about Christ. You're your own worst enemy. If you're who you say you are, why in the world are you doing this? Yeah. Amen. What would be lost if you came off your cross? Yeah. They always look at it, what would be gained, but the question is what would be lost? So, he didn't come down though many thought he should have. Second point I'd like to make is that he didn't come down, though he could have. <laughs> when they were over there in Gethsemane, Judas came up and betrayed Jesus with a kiss. And you know the, you know the story. Oh, Peter pulled out that sword, didn't he? <laughs> 
Hey, I don't fault Peter for that, by the way. Come on. But he was concerned about his Lord and the safety of his Lord. He didn't quite understand what was going on. And I'm telling you, he didn't reach up there to flick that guy's ear off. He tried to take his head off. Well, by the grace of God, that fellow ducked and just his ear came off. Amen? Of course, Jesus put it back on. But do you remember what the Lord said to him over there in Matthew 26 and verse 53? He says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? Do, do you think, Peter, that I, the Son of God, need you to protect me, to keep me from this? This is my hour. This is the power of darkness rearing its head, its kingdom, and this is my kingdom and my power standing up to it. Amen. This is how we're going to do it. I'm not going to cut them all down. That'll come in time. But right now, I'm providing salvation, not only for you, buddy, but for them too. Amen? He didn't come down off that cross, though he could have. But I'm going to tell you, there's a way, there's, there's, there's a way of looking at that. I don't believe he could have. You say, well, what do you mean, Brother Sam? He said right here he could call 12 legions of angels. Yeah, he could, but he wouldn't have. He couldn't do that. He didn't come down because his character demanded that he stay the course. Amen. He has a character from God. You know, his power being omnipotent was not in coming off the cross his power was displayed by staying on the cross amen he was in incredible pain but he stayed on the cross just like us the power is not uh, laying down the cross getting off the cross the power is taking up the cross and staying on that cross even though things get hard. That's where the real power is. By the way, it's very dangerous for those that would lay down their cross. Jesus has some very strong words for people like that, and it probably means they're lost anyway. He was in, he, he was racked with pain, but yet he stayed the course. He showed his power. He stayed on the cross. And I want to tell you something. We too can stick by the stuff. We too can stay the course. We too can stay on the cross. In Galatians 5.24, Paul says, They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. We can stay the course by the power of God. He didn't come down even though he experienced more pain than any human being. He didn't come down, though they mocked Him. We too can stay the course when we're mocked. He didn't come down, though they doubted Him. We too can stay the course, though we are doubted. He stayed on that course to conquer sin. And when He did, we read this morning in, in Romans chapter 8 in our class that we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Amen? We are not only conquerors, we are more than conquerors through Christ. We can take up the cross. We can bear that cross. The shame, the pain, the doubt, the mocking, the disgrace, the, the openness, the hurt, the, the um, treachery. We can, we can experience every bit of that. Stay the course. Walk with Jesus in joy. Because He didn't come down. We don't have to come down either. Amen. Aren't you glad He didn't come down? So he didn't come down, though many thought he should have. He also didn't come down, though he could have. But then let me just give you this statement. He didn't come down as though he would have. In other words, it's not even an option. <laughs> he was not going to come down. Amen. You can just mark that down. He was not going to come down. You know, when this world mocks you and puts pressure on you, you know what they're hoping you'll do? Come down. Yeah. That's what they want you to do is come down. That's right. But when you know Christ, 
And it's His blood and His testimony. That's the two great wings, amen, that we saw in Revelation 12. His blood and His testimony. Not only do many think you should come down, you know, you shouldn't lose your family, you shouldn't lose all these things, you should come on down to the cross, and even though you have the power to lay down the cross, you can't do it. You're not going to lay it down. You're not going to. Now, I, I know there's times we have failure, and I know there's times we have fear, but overall, you can't come off that cross when you know Him. You just can't. He would not have accomplished what He set out to do if He would have come off that cross. We know in our hearts that we can't come off our cross because He's using us to accomplish what He set out to do. If He had come down off that cross, He would have made every one of God's promises void. I want to tell you, Christian, stay on your cross. You may fail. You may prove to be a bitter spring to others. But you take up that cross, you get right with God, and you stay on that cross. Because you're living the promises. And the world cannot understand the promise that if you turn and trust Christ, that He'll take away the power of sin <laughs> in your life. They can't understand that. It's a promise from God. You are the epistle for that promise. You are. If you fail, you get back up. Or you just walk with God and you don't fall down in front of Him. But you walk and you stay on that cross. <laughs> Anytime they try to mock you and jeer at you, see, your cross is a failure. See, it's not what you said it would be. It's not what you think it is. You just stay right on with it. Let them cast it in your teeth. And you just stay right on with it. Amen. So many times I hear people say, well, I tried that and I still couldn't get over my sin. You know what? Jesus is not something you try. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is God of all heaven. We bow down to Him. He is the Lord. Right. Amen. How about that book we saw last night in Barnes and Noble? The Faith of Trump. And there, and, and the, and the book is endorsed by Sean Hannity. Yeah. The Catholic. Yeah. I saw his show some years ago and he had Rick Warren on there. And uh, he says, well, what, what do you say? Now, you know there's a problem if a Catholic and an evangelical are saying the same thing. Yes. Okay, you can see nothing but Antichrist in this. Amen. The Pope is over there going goody, 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 clapping his hands and uh, saying, look, it's all working. Okay? But he says, what do, you, what do you want to tell people, Rick? And Rick says this. Try Jesus for 30 days. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess, you know... How do you try Jesus? Like, do you, okay, I'm going to stop drinking, getting high, watching filth, and I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to read my Bible every day and pray for 30 days. Is that what he means? I don't know what he means by try Jesus for 30 days. And then if you're not satisfied, forget about it. That's crazy. Yeah. He, he's not some pair of shoes or a car you test drive. He's the Lord who is holy and demands that you be holy Amen. or you be thrust into hell without hope. Amen. That's who He is. The world can't understand that you say, hey, listen, I want you to know something. I was once a drunkard, but God took it away. Those guys Friday night that I was witnessing to, they couldn't get that. Well, everybody has to come to their form of peace. I said, well, let me tell you what happened. I started telling them about sin. I said, you're sinners. I'm a sinner. Jesus had to die for that sin because Amen. God's going to throw you in hell over it. You're enslaved to it. And you got to be honest with me. You cannot stop your lust. You cannot stop your pride. You can't do it. Amen. And they both looked at me like, how did he know? Because I are a human. Yeah. I know. 
Amen. And I know what God did in my life. I know the victory that I won. And it had nothing to do with me. It was all God reaching for me. And I thank God that He stayed the course and He didn't come down. And He fulfilled all the promises. He, the Comforter has come. He led captivity captive. He gave gifts unto men. He gave all those promises through the cross. I can live the promises because of my cross. Had he come down, the devil would have defeated him. That's not going to happen. The devil has not defeated Jesus Christ in any shape, form, or fashion. Well, on the cross he had him licked. No, he didn't. Matter of fact, when Jesus, when Peter was preaching to the Jews, he said, you with, uh, uh, what do you say, wicked hands crucified the Lord of glory. But it was made to be carried out that way. God was in charge the whole time. Yep. See, the Son of God thirsted on that cross because God made it so. Amen. He suffered pain on that cross because God designed it as such. Without those things, we never would have been born again, you see. Right. The price would not have been paid. The holiness of God would not have been vindicated. Uh, God's wrath towards sin would not have been assuaged had He not gone through what He went through. I want to tell you, just like we saw um, recently in, in uh, well, we saw it this morning in 1 Peter 4, or maybe it's later, I don't know. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Yes. Amen? God designed it as such. Right. You take up the cross and you follow Jesus, you're going to suffer. But the grace of God has wings that lift you above it. Amen. It will carry you through. Had He come down off that cross, my faith would be vain. Yes. Folks, I guess i got some questions for you. About your cross. Should you stay on your cross? Many thought he should have come down. Should you stay on your cross? Well, I would think so after what we've heard. That the promises are being fulfilled through us. We are growing in the grace of God. And we only truly have victory through the cross of Christ. It'll never be outside of that cross. He said, abide in me. Folks, how do you think you abide in Christ if you're not taking up His cross? If you're not going with Him without the gate to suffer reproach, or without the camp yep. to suffer reproach, should you stay on your cross? Oh, yes, you should. Amen. Stay on it. I think about Saul, and I don't even know if I preached this recently. I may have. I, I'm getting to where I'm just old, and, and I don't even keep my sermons anymore. They go on paper, or maybe not, and I throw them away. So I'm, I'm just confused. I'm getting old. But remember, the, the men of Jabesh Gilead, they went to get Saul's body and his son's bodies off that wall. And it's because they owed. And when they get out there and everybody saw what they're doing, say, well, shouldn't you turn back because, you know, these Philistines will kill you. They're big and bad and they've got all the weapons in the world and you're just Jabesh Gilead. And, well, through history, you guys kind of stink at war. You're little. You're a nobody. Shouldn't you just turn around? Hey, listen, I get you. I, I follow that. I believe that's your king. He saved you once. But there's nothing you can do to repay that. And there's nothing you can do now. See how they could have talked them out of that. But no, they stayed the course. Why? Because they owed him. They owed a debt. Yeah. They owed it. Folks, we are debtors. Not only to Christ, but we are debt. And that's an eternal debt. But we are also debtors to these lost sinners. Yes. I don't really understand that full concept. But the Bible says we are debtors to these cons to these sinners. So to preach the gospel to them. So let me ask you: Should you come off your cross? <laughs> no. Amen. Not at all. Let me ask you this: Could you stay on your cross? Could you stay on your cross? You know, sometimes people. 
get overwhelmed with persecution. And not everybody has the same gifts. Some people can endure persecution at a much higher level than others. I know the grace of God's involved. But God somehow gives us our own uh, nature and our own gifts and our own abilities. And history is rife with those from the church that that did um, compromise to not be killed. And later on, they ended up being killed anyway. Amen. Um, but I'm asking you today, can you stay on that cross? Can you? You may be thinking, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can pick up and handle the persecution. It's being cast in my teeth every day. It's overwhelming. It's powerful. I have the ability to lay down this cross. I can be a nominal Christian and still go to heaven when I die. That's the thoughts that come through our mind. But I'm here to encourage you this morning that Paul said to the Philippians in chapter 4 and verse 13, he says, Yea, or he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That means I can stay on the cross. That means I can carry out the promises. That means I can maintain a testimony. That means I can show people the blood that's been applied to me. I can show the people the victory of God instead of laying down and, and showing the failure of my flesh. I can stay on my cross. He didn't come down. I don't have to come down. Amen? So, should you stay on your cross? I think so. Amen. Could you stay on your cross? Absolutely, through Christ. We can do all things. But finally, let me say, ask you this. Would you stay on your cross? Will you? If you're thinking, well, I don't know what tomorrow holds, uh, I could fail. You've already failed in your mind. Salvation begins in the mind. Did y'all know that? Begins in the mind. Following God begins in the mind. The warfare of the devil and from the world and the flesh is in your mind. To overcome your mind. And how you think. I want to ask you, would you stay on your cross? Will you stay on the cross? Will you make up your mind to prove all things? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And he's talking about humility there. But ultimately in that humility in Philippians 2, he's talking about going to the cross. Would you have that mind? That you would stay on your cross regardless of what is cast in your teeth. Hebrews 13.13 13 says, Let us go forth therefore unto Him without the camp, bearing His reproach. Should you do that? Yep. Could you do that? Absolutely, by the grace of God. My question is now, will you do that? Will you stay the course? Will you quit you like men and be strong? Will you stay in the faith? Will you abide in the vine? Amen. Will you love your brother? Will you preach the gospel? Will you suffer for Christ's sake? Will you be what God has called you to be? And that is a Christian on a cross. Will you be that? Amen. He didn't come down. Will you? Amen. Let's pray.